We did the titanius and the adductor brevis and the adductor longus, and we worked our way down to the adductor magnus. Um, its name makes sense, this is why I paused here. Um, this muscle attaches not only to the pubic bone where we've been putting everything else, but you can see it has a broad attachment also um, to the ischial tuberosity. So if you can imagine that on the hip here, you can see a lot of that here from the pubic bone. Um, it's going to extend all the way around to um, the posterior aspect there. That's your t what you sit on, your butt bone, the ischial tuberosity. A broad attachment here, and it has a broad attachment on the femur as well. You can see that it attaches not only to the linea aspera, that's where we've been putting all the other adductors on the linea aspera, but it also has an attachment all the way down to the medial epicondyle, the femur. So the linea aspera on the posterior aspect of the femur, and all the way down to the medial epicondyle of the femur. So this is a huge muscle. In your cat, if this helps you, in your cat, your lab manual calls it the adductor femoris. So this is your adductor magnus in humans. Um, if you call this muscle the adductor magnus on your lab exam, I'm going to be okay with that. So uh, it's the parallel. Uh, very broad attachment, and you can see why it's named. Now this one gets most of its information from the obturator, but it does pick up some sciatic. Now, you haven't seen the sacral plexus lab yet, and I'm gonna mention the lumbar plexus again today. So the obturator is one of the two major nerves that come out of the lumbar plexus, remember? So the femoral and the obturator, those are the two you found in the cat. The femoral we're gonna <coughs> see today is the primary supplier of the anterior compartment muscles, the quadriceps. So we're going to look at that. <clears throat> the obturator is the nerve we expect to be picking up the muscles of adduction. So the gracilis, the adductor longus, the adductor brevis, the adductor magnus, all these adductors attached to the pubic bone are getting obturators. So the obturator is the medial nerve. The <coughs> obturator is the adductor nerve. The femoral nerve we're going to pick up, and um, we've seen it a couple times already. We saw it all, all the way up at the iliopsoas muscle, and we're going to see it here in the quadriceps. This muscle is your muscle of extension at the knee and flexion at the hip, so I'm going to say this several times today. So this obturator here is the adductor. Now you're wondering why are you bringing all this up here? Well, because not only is this a broad muscle, its, it's proximal attachment is very broad from the pubic all the way over to the ischial tuberosity. Its distal attachment is very broad, along the linea aspera all the way down to the medial condyle, uh, epicondyle of the femur. A very large muscle here. It extends, if you will, from the pubic area, which is very medial. I expect the adduction function to be there on the pubic bone. I expect that obturator, I expect. But it also extends posteriorly. The muscle extends back toward the butt bone, toward the ischial tuberosity. So this very broad muscle here picks up obturator, which is no surprise. But what does surprise students, but it shouldn't, is the fact that it picks up some information from the sciatic. The sciatic nerve comes out of the sacral plexus. And we're going to put the sciatic nerve on the back of the leg. So whereas we put the femoral and the obturator on the front, we're going to put the sciatic on the back. Now, how is it that the adductor magnus has both obturator and sciatic? And that's why it's important to point out to students this broad-ranging proximal attachment of this muscle. If you learn the attachment and you know the general description of the nerves, then it doesn't surprise you to learn that the adductor magnus picks up both obturator and sciatic. Okay, much more to come on that. So reminder, right? Linea aspera, remember where that is. The gluteal tubercle, the lesser trochanter, the greater trochanter, the medial lateral condyles, the intercondyl fossas. These are all things I have to use in my verbiage here as I continue. All right, so a reminder about the lumbar plexus here. I'm not talking about genital femoral here. Um, it's underlined, I, I didn't take that out. I want to remind you of lumbar plexus. I want to stick this in your head again. Okay, 
So the two, the two nerves that we've talked about already, sorry, the three nerves that we've talked about already in the lumbar plexus are not the ones you dissected in the lab. The three nerves we've, we've talked about for muscle early on in lumbar plexus discussion, the first time you saw this, were the iliohypogastric and the ilioluminal. And I said, as I taught you the attachments of all the muscles of the abdomen, that you get intercostals to those until you get low. And then you start picking up stuff out of the lumbar plexus. So you're going to remember from me, general description, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal, pick up lower portions of the abdominal muscles. External oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis, rex abdominis, the lower portions of the abdominal muscles are picked up in the upper portions of the lumbar plexus and the intercostals. So we talked about that. When I showed you the internal oblique, I said, look, the fibers of this muscle cross over the inguinal ligament and pass down into the scrotum as a muscle called the cremaster. Now, that nerve is the genitofemoral. So those are the three that we have mentioned in passing so far. Now, I just now, on the previous slide, mentioned to you a couple of the details, again, just the introductory details of these two, the femoral and the obturator. So you know now, if I ask you, what does the obturator nerve do? Well, you're going to say to me, it adducts the leg. It does the adductor brevis, the adductor longus, the adductor magnus. If I say to you femoral, now you haven't seen it yet, if I say to you femoral, you should think this is the quadricep nerve. This is the one that's going to extend at the knee. So we'll learn the four big quadricep muscles and how you extend. Okay, so reminder about the major components of the lumbar plexus, and now let's look at them together. All right, so the first muscle is the sartorius. The sartorius extends from the anterior superior, anterior superior iliac spine <coughs> all the way down to the medial proximal tibia. This is the longest muscle in the body. In your cat, it's just a flat muscle, but you can see the same attachments. Now, the sartorius has clinical significance. It's on the front of the leg, so it gets femoral. That's no surprise. But this muscle has clinical significance. Again, not in your book, but extremely important. Has been brought up. Now to emphasize again, you have learned the components now of this, and so I want to teach it to you in a bit more detail. The sartorius, as you can see, makes the lateral border of the all-famous femoral triangle. So I showed se several of you in the laboratory, I showed this to. In the cat, it is clear as a bell. You can see the exact same borders in the cat. Now the pectineus sits a little bit differently in the cat. It doesn't really, some of you it looks like to be on the floor, others it looks like to be the medial border. So the pectineus is a little fuzzy. Um, but you can clearly see the longus and the sartorius as borders of this triangle. <clears throat> so the borders are of this triangle. The inguinal ligament, the sartorius, and the adductor longus. Now, I taught you the inguinal ligament whenever we were looking at attachments of the abdominal muscles. And I told you it's attached here to the anterior superior iliac spine and down here to the pubic bone a palpable structure. The inguinal ligament forms the superior border of this triangle, the sartorius forms the lateral border, and the adductor longus forms the medial border. In that triangle, you will find the femoral vein, the femoral artery, and the femoral nerve. Now, you guys have seen this break in the femoral nerve in your cat. I started everybody here picture in your lab manual, I'll point it to it. See right there? It's giving off sartorius, and there it goes to the quads. You can see that clears the bell beautifully in your cat dissection, the femoral nerve. The reason this place is so important is because this artery is the entry point for coronary artery procedures oftentimes. If a stent is going to be placed in a coronary artery in the heart, this is the entry point. Now, you don't know enough anatomy from me yet, at least, to be able to explain that. And I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. But when you leave me, when you leave me, this 
this fall, you will be able to go through with the stent right here and track it all the way up to the left anterior descending artery. You will be able to answer the question, if the artery has all the pressure in it and it's dangerous to cut it, then why don't they enter into the vein if they want to go to the heart? There's no pressure in there. So these are questions that I am going to answer for you in this class. You will be able to track this pathway backwards and answer those questions. In fact, you will find them in your CAT, and we will detail them in here in the lecture, the pathway. Okay, so I'm not finished. We'll do that again with the femoral, femoral artery later. Now, the floor of this triangle is the iliops, psoas, and pectineus muscles. Now, I thought there's a chance that you may have forgotten. So I'll put them back in here again today so you can see them. Here's the sartorius right here from the anterior superior iliac spine extending across to the medial proximal tibia. Here's your psoas major and iliacus. So there's the psoas major that you guys cut through as you were tracing the femoral nerve back to pick up the obturator, right? This one attaches to the transverse processes and bodies of the lumbar bones and comes down here to the posterior aspect of the lesser trochanter and its cousin that hangs on to the lesser trochanter with it, the iliacus, here in the iliac fossa. And then here's the pectineus. Here's the adductor longus. So in this image, it looks like the pectineus is right next to the adductor longus. And it kind of is. Even in your cat, you notice the pectineus here being very close to the adductor longus. It is, in fact, on the floor of the triangle, it is slightly deeper than the longus. So the femoral artery and nerve, as you know, come right out of this psoas major muscle right here and feed the sartorius and go here to the quads. And the obturator goes deep over here to pick up the adductors. All right, so here they are again. Here's the psoas major. You remember this picture? And there's the iliacus right there. So there's your pectineus right there. And um, the contents I mentioned to you already. All right. Now let's do the quadricep muscles, four of them. The quadricep muscles are the vastus lateralis first, and it has an attachment to the greater trochanter, all right? So if you knew already that the greater trochanter was lateral, then you didn't get surprised by this. Big muscle on the, on the right-hand side of your right leg, on the lateral side, going to the greater trochanter, no surprise there. Now what does surprise you here and we're gonna see it again on the other side. The vastus lateralis is thought to be a muscle of the anterior side of the leg because when it contracts, the knee extends. So there are four muscles that do this, the four big ones on the front of your leg that do this. So it should, knowing that, it should surprise you to see the other attachment that I have written here. This muscle also attaches to the linea aspera. Now, where is that? That's on the back of the femur, yeah. So we're gonna see this on the lateral side and on the medial side. So this is what I meant when I told you early on, the linea aspera. So many important things go there. So the first thing you should think when I say muscles attached to the linea aspera is adduction. So you should think adduction of the leg when you think linea aspera. But let's be careful, shall we? Because 50% of the quadriceps, the lateralis and the medialis, also have linea aspera attachments, and their job is extension at the knee. So are you telling me then with this that muscles attached to the linea aspera extend at the knee joint. That's what I'm saying. So this is the first one. I'll show you the medialis on the next picture. Now, it says to the pat. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a picture of the knee today. We're gonna to break this down, the knee. Um, when I say patella, I mean this. There is a thick tendinoligamentous sheet that covers the front of your knee. 
and I'm going to name the parts of it for you today. They are all fused together. You cannot do a dissection here on the front of the knee and tease out the pieces and parts because that entire aponeurotic, I would say, tendinous sheet fuses as one band at the patella crossing over the knee and attaching to the tibial tuberosity. Y'all, the quadricep muscles are said to extend at the knee, but all their attachments are the, to the patella. The patella is a sesamoid bone that does not articulate with any other bones. There's no way to do that. You cannot cause the tibia to move by attaching muscles to the patella. But that's what the attachments are said to be. The tendons are said to attach to the patella. But as we will see, as we do this carefully, we will see that extending from the patella down to the tibial tuberosity is a named ligament, bone to bone ligament. And we call it the patellar ligament. And because all of these tendons of the quadriceps are fused onto the patella, they are also fused onto the patellar ligament. So when these muscles contract, they don't pull on the patella, they pull on the tibia. And that's why you get extension at the knee. So I wanted to clear that up by patella. Now all these say it. The rectus femoris attaches to the anterior inferior iliac spine, just below the attachment of the sartorius, just inferior to it. The medialis, as I told you, attaches to the linea aspera and the intertrochanteric line the intertrochanteric line. Can I say that? So I, I, I pulled a picture out of Gray's Atlas because your book doesn't have one here to show you where this is. This is the line that extends from the greater to the lesser trochanter. And is that line on the anterior or posterior aspect of the femur? The intertrochanteric line is a line on the anterior aspect. Do you see that? That's where the vastus medialis is attached there. All that anterior um, intertrochanteric line from the greater to lesser trochanter. Why do I not have a distal attachment here and here? Why do I not have a distal attachment here? Because they're all the same. Vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius. Now this one's the one that's deep to the rectus femoris. The intermediate's here, and it goes right on to the anterior surface um, and slightly lateral on the femur, all of them to the tibial tuberosity. Now, let me ask you a question. Of the four big muscles on the front of your leg, all of which get the femoral nerve of those four big muscles that are there, how many of them attach to the hip? How many of them attach to the hip? So here's the vastus lateralis, it's on the greater trochanter, and the aspera. The rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, and the vastus intermedius. How many of them attach to the coxa bone, the hip bone? So, the vastus lateralis is on the greater trochanter and linea aspera. This one's on the anterior inferior left spine. This one is on the linea aspera and the trochanteric line. And this one's anterior and lateral on the femur. How many of them are on the hip? So everybody thinks this when they're, when they're thinking about the quadricep. These huge muscles on the front of my leg that are making my knee extend. They are all go from my hip down to my tibia. Is that true? No. How many of them? One. One. One of them goes all the way up to the hip. Only the rectus femoris, the one right in the middle. All right, now we're gonna turn the leg around, do the back. The sciatic um, nerve here we're going to emphasize is the sacral plexus. And as you can see here, it leaves the pelvis via the greater sciatic notch, which I can say now because you've learned the hip bone, deep to the gluteus maximus. So if we're going to feed the gluteus maximus and the medius and the minimus, we've got to come off the sacral plexus. We're going to 
you do a superior gluteal nerve for the deep ones and an inferior gluteal nerve for the shallow ones. And they're called superior and inferior gluteals because they're making their way down the plexus. I'm going to show you that. So this one's deep to the maximus, the gluteus maximus muscle. Um, I'm going to teach you the IT band fusion here with the tensor also. So you can see that. We'll talk about that because you saw that in your cat as well. This one is L4 to S4. The major nerve is the sciatic, the longest and thickest nerve of the body. It is composed of two nerves, as you already know from lab, the tibial and common fibular, or peroneal. Now this is something that we're going to want to tease out here, because if I say sciatic, you should think the back of your leg. That's true. That's what you should think. But you need to do better than that. You need to talk about the tibial component and the common fibular component. And generally speaking, when we do that, generally speaking, we're going to use the common fibular component to talk about the, lat the muscles on the lateral aspect of the crural region of the leg and tibial getting everything else. So plantar flexion is tibial, uh, sorry, yeah, that's right. And then dorsiflexion is common fibular. Those muscles for dorsiflexion, for some bizarre reason, are going to be called the extensors. And those for plantar flexion are going to be called the flexors. I would not have named them that way. Um, I would have named them according to the joint action. But that's something a teacher is supposed to do, point these things out to you. Tibial and common fibular. Now the tibial passes through the popliteal fossa to the posterior calf and sole of the foot. So the tibial nerve, you should think of as being the nerve that is going to do plantar flexion. The common fibular at the knee joint then goes to the lateral calf and the dorsum of the foot. So the extensors, that dorsiflex the foot, this is the common fibular uh, scenario. Sacral plexus. This is what it looks like in colors. So over here I have colors to help you remember. The obturator on the medial side and the femoral on the lateral side, on the front. The femoral and the obturator. Over here on the back of the leg I have the, um, I have the sciatic. We're going to talk about these gluteal nerves also. And here's the tibial and there's the common fibular here going to the lateral aspect here and the tibial continuing down here to do the gastrocnemius and the soleus and the plantaris to do plantar flexion, which for some bizarre reason, these muscles are called flexors. So, all right. So this is what we're going to talk about. Now let's talk about um, a few of the details here. The first muscle we're going to do is the butt muscles, the gluteal muscles, the the gluteus maximus and medius and minimus, in that order. Now they're a little bit different on the cat. You don't have a minimus to find. And the medius and the maximus are actually superior and inferior oriented on the cat. In humans, they are superficial to deep. And so we'll point that out. The superior gluteal is going to go to the deep ones and the inferior gluteal to the big one, the superficial one. All right, so let's do that one first. So here it is. The gluteus maximus is attached to the ilium sacrum and coccyx, a very large muscle, ilium sacrum and coccyx, a broad attachment on the hip bone. And then it comes over here to attach to what's called the iliotibial tract and gets information from the inferior gluteal nerve. Hmm. The gluteus maximus attaches to the iliotibial tract. Okay, now let's pause for just a moment here. Again, not in your book. But this is an interesting little piece of anatomy. You can see here um, the iliotibial tract or band as a fibrous band on the lateral aspect of the leg. The truth is this band, but this picture does not show it, but you can see it on your cat. <clears throat> this band actually extends deep here to the tensor muscle to attach all the way at the joint cavity where the head of the femur is. I won't ask you that, okay? But I do want you to see how it's fused together here. This is, this is really 
the lateral compartment wall of your leg. And it's interesting for several reasons. Uh, the first one is the gluteus maximus is fused here. So the gluteus maximus does go all the way over the femur. And I'm going to show, we'll go back and I'll show you that. It goes all the way over to the gluteal tubercle, which you've seen on the femur already. 